it's eight o'clock and I'm just relaxing. Having a nice easy start today with a coffee and reading my book. Well, this spot brings back memories. I parked my mini down there. It wasn't quite as sunken in and uh, grounded out when I was trying to get off it again. Well, I'm not gonna see a train, I don't think, but that's no reason not to go up the embankment like I did all those years ago. <laughs> There it is, Malian Spout. Can't go to Whitby without having fish and chips. So I bought myself some fish and chips. I've got somewhere totally off the beaten track. I'm in the sunshine, I've got 4G, and uh, farmer doesn't normally let people park here, and he said, Yeah, pull up there and you'll be fine. I'm on the pancakes again. I've thinned it down with a lot more water this time. So a seat. Oh, yes! Hey, hey! So a bit of result, turned up at Runswick Bay as planned, although a few days earlier. Turns out, just round the corner is my old mate Steve. Hello, it's Mark. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing better now. It's good to be <laughs> out with a mate. It's been a long time, what, seven, eight years probably. Long, long time, so, mate. Well, got my first fish in the boat. That's my personal best pollock. Probably a couple of pounds in weight. And a beautiful fish that we don't get locally. Look at that, middle of summer, beautiful cod, couple of pounder. Look at that. So Steve, what was that I missed just after I'd left? What did you see? Something you wanted to see before you left me, Mark. I did. I did I want to see. a big pilot whale and I'm over the moon. I'd love to eat these right now, but these are going to go to the farmer to thank him for his kindness last night. Been back to where Steve and Nikki are running and I've had a lovely hot shower, really powerful. And also, washed my clothes. A pint in a pub with food in a pub with friends and a dog in a pub. There's Nikki, we haven't seen Nikki yet. <laughs> She's got camera shy. Well, after giving away all my fish today, I've gone for the cod and chips. But you'll notice that the chips aren't on there. The chips, that's for two of us to share. So today, I'm going to go back out to Runswick Bay, back on the water, back fishing, and hopefully, I'm going to see a whale. Well, look at this beauty. Lovely, plump, fresh cod. About four pound or so. There you go, there's porpoises out there again. Second time I've seen them say. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the place. If you live here, I apologise. But it's absolutely awful. And it stinks. Every part of Hartlepool you drive through stinks of something or other. Shit, rubbish, gas, oil, uh, the works. It's just horrible. I believe they uh, they hanged a monkey here once many years ago. It's probably overjoyed to be honest. So I'm under a cherry tree now. There's squirrels around, and uh, hopefully I'm in for a quiet night. Well, you know that cod I caught earlier? I filleted it. I've got two massive great fillets there. Well, there go the chips bubbling away nicely. Well, there it is. It is as gorgeous as it looks. That'll bring me some relief. Well, look at that lovely collection of twinkling jewels. And my ankle feels better too. So here's the sculpture of Tommy. Let's go a closer look. Look at this lovely, lovely scenery. 
There ain't that many people on the beach here. That is what they call bracing. <laughs> I reckon they're, they're sort of local northeastern names, the equivalent of Matthew, Luke, and John from the Bible, maybe. Here we go. Nothing to do with my grandfather, but there's evidence of the Second World War defences. Little pillbox at the bottom of the hill here. So here we are, looking through the firing slit in a wartime pillbox at Easington Colliery. Hey, you know what day it is today, don't you? It's Sunday. So what are we having on Sunday? Ha! Sunday is the day of corned beef hash in one of my grandfather's wartime locations. Champion, because I'm still in the northeast. Cracking. Look at that. Perfect. Let's get her on a plate. Well, look at that. A white turd. Haven't seen one of them for a while. 23rd of April, 1942. 81st Heavy AA Regiment. Royal Artillery received orders to mobilise for overseas. May the 27th, 1942. Special train conveying regimental headquarters 254 and half 255 heavy anti-aircraft batteries left Horden, County Durham, 0230 hours. Arrived Garrick, 1130 hours and embarked on HMT H12 Aquitania under command of OC troops, Lieutenant Colonel Sir Charles Grattan Bellew, MC. I've just had a disaster as I've come around a bend. The uh, screws have pulled out the bracket that hold that cabinet in place and it tipped over. The only thing that stopped it completely crashing down was the wiring from the solar panel which it caught on. Um, solar panel's still working, still charging the power bank. I've had to jam in my two boxes there to hold it, so that's going to need fixing. Here he comes, here he comes. Where's Dave? There he is. On, on video, blocking me in, blocking me in. Come on, I want, I want the best parking. You look no older. You, you, I look older. Are no, you, you look no older. Oh, I look no older. <laughs> I had hair, mate. I had hair. <laughs> she looks the same age as she did then, and we don't. You said you look older. Yeah, but you said you look older. Not bad for an old bird. <laughs> I love her. Got her legs. <laughs> this is Dave <laughs> on the left. That's me. <laughs> and this is Dave. Dave coming up even more on the left. There he is. Look at that. Look at that. Look to see him. Oh my God. Hey, it sounds the same. Well, I can't hear. Ooh. Yeah. Right, so let's just review the carnage. I've moved everything there. Um, got the fridge out of the way. Well, I think it's all repairable, recoverable. That panel's pulled off on the inside with electrics, but that's electrics aren't currently in use. Look at this, it's got a cracking northern northern fry up in a house, yeah, cooked by house. Dave, prepared, ready. Monica's doing a washing up because it's the north. Because they can't stand it. Oh, you don't like black pudding? No. No. Oh. I've only thought of it. You're not really northern, are you? It's like a, a big scab, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we're in the north. When up north, have brown sauce. Yeah. Well, an hour or so's work, some heavy duty screws and a few blocks and that's all fixed and and uh, more solid than it was when it came out of the the Devon works. It's Lord Lundury, that's as much as I can tell you. He's quite a controversial because of what he got up to. What did he get up to? Well, he wasn't a nice person, apparently. Was, was he not? Yeah. And, uh, you weren't there? And they reckon there's a mistake on the statue because they, they say the horse doesn't have a tongue. Oh. And that used to be the public toilets. Right. But they filled them in because of the uh, naughty things that were going on. No, we saw naughty things. Well, have a guess. Did you do naughty things? No. Did you do naughty I things? Wouldn't. I did some smelly things. Go on, be rude. <laughs> smelly oh, things, dreadful. not naughty things. Coal shovels. You can tell you're up in the northeast. Coal shovels. Dave's just bought me some stotties. Tell me what stotties are and so on. They're a, they're a large bread roll from the northeast. Right. And, uh, That's a huge roll. Yes, yeah, and very heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy. And what's, what's, what do you do with them? What the, word, the word stot is uh, slang in the northeast. It means to throw something or to bounce something. So right. The saying goes that with the original recipe, when you're making it at home, not from the bakers. Uh, if you make them correctly, you should be able to throw them on the ground and they'll not break or fall yeah. apart and they should actually bounce. <laughs> but these are made of bacon, so don't try it. Oh, I'll try, I'll try it anyway. Uh, they feel soft, I thought they were going to be hard. 
<laughs> uh huh. Okay. Hey, look at that. That's too close. No, wild raspberry. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Mm. It's very pleasant driving through County Durham. It's very beautiful. The only problem is the last 10 minutes, including roadworks, I've been stuck behind a tractor pulling a tanker full of shit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've now gone to the colonies and I am in Scotland. Let's shake Tommy. I've just crossed the border. I'm now at Gretna at the services. The first Kentucky Fried Chicken after you cross the border, no less. Woohoo! 2,000 miles done. I'm just on the Glasgow outskirts. Och, hey, the new laddie. It's time for tea up here in Scotland. So, I've got my, my Stotty from the northeast, bought by Dave in Durham today for me. Using some of the leftover sausage meat, I've uh, rolled it in flour into little meatballs. I've opened a can of plum tomatoes, and I've got obviously a beer. Well, that's all ready to go, and I've put some crumbled feta in and on as well. I can't wait to eat this. The sun is setting, and I'm parked up in a gorgeous location overlooking the Clyde. Well, that's a morning to wake up to. Although, if the sun was a bit higher, I'd probably feel a bit more. Uh, happy i've made myself some porridge especially as we're in scotland and i'm gonna grind on a bit of sea salt the romans built a wall specifically to stop the scottish people going eh yeah pansy you put sugar on your coffee on your porridge any jock will tell you you have to have salt on your porridge because it thinks makes them look hard salt on the porridge what's it like very Scottish. Well it's bad enough looking old fat and grey with all this beard and hair growth and fluffy but now that I'm in Scotland I keep getting mistaken for Billy Connolly. I decided that's it, when in Scotland, go Scottish, don't be Billy Connolly, be renting from train spotting, gone and got myself a hair clipper. Well this would have been it, the end of the line. Garrick station, off the train, along the platform concourse, out onto the jetty. And off in one of the tenders to where the Aquitaine was waiting at anchor. This is kind of how it would have looked when my grandfather arrived. May the 27th, special train conveying regimental headquarters 254 and half 255 heavy AA batteries left Horden, County Durham, 0230 hours. Arrived Gurrock, 1130 hours and embarked on HMT H12 Aquitania under command of OC troops, Lieutenant Colonel Sir Charles Grattan Bellew. On the 31st of May, 1942, the war diary records. Passed out of Clyde in convoy, weighing anchor at 1830 hours. Clock Lighthouse is where the Clyde anti-submarine boom was secured. This had to uh, be open to allow shipping through. The records for convoy WS19PQ record. The convoy has been routed as in Admiralty message 1855B slash 26 slash 5. The first ship of the Clyde portion will pass the boom at 1900B, 31st May, in order to rendezvous with the Liverpool portion, 0600B, 1st June, in position 270 degrees over say. Today's journey is beautiful. I mean, Scotland is really stunning. This is the Glencoe Valley viewpoint. Don't even need any words from me, does it? 
I'd been here before, but I was doing some filming with the Gadget Show. Had a fantastic time, sat on that island a bit, did a bit of fishing, and I taught Susie and Otis to paddle. Now how cool is that? I'm a bit annoyed. Mm, angry face. Got to go over a ferry. Yeah, right, sorry, sorry, a ferry. I put in traveling in a, in a vehicle. No, ferry, 13 quid. No, says I, that ain't happening. Well, fans, I've done it again. Here we are. There we go, the lads and lasses. That's as far west as I can get. Well, that's where I'm kipping tonight. Here comes the sun. Those miscovered mountains are home now for me. I picked this up yesterday, a breakfast pack. It's got four pork links, which are small chipolatas, four beef lawn slices, never had those, lawn sausage, four black pudding slices, and two haggis slices. Now that's a Scottish breakfast. Black pudding, haggis, egg, tomato, potato scones, link sausages, or pork links, and that's that lawn sausage. Look. Mm. That was great. Cracking result, I spoke to Pentland Ferries just now and have managed to change my booking to uh, sail to Orkney from Gills Bay to St Margaret's Hope from uh, basically from uh, the 24th of July to tomorrow which is the 22nd which gives me an extra two days to explore Orkney. Well, I was kind of hoping I might see this but I didn't actually look for where it was. I'm here, I'm here, on the shores of Loch Ness. I am. And oh, I'm sure I saw something. Sure, sure I saw something. Like, oh no, it's a dog. It's a dog. Dogs aren't monsters. Well, I've made it to Thurso. It's about five o'clock. I'm gonna have a little late lunch. I bought these things, they're called butteries. Haggis and cracked pepper crisps. Haggis and black pepper uh, crisps in a buttery sandwich. That's nice. And I've not had a crisp sandwich for so long. Well that's it. That's as far north as you can go on mainland UK. I have done the four cardinal points. The most easterly, most southerly, most westerly and most northerly points of mainland UK in my grandfather's camper van in exactly three weeks and 2,502 miles. Cracking job, Grandpa's van. As requested by my YouTube fan, Slabby Rider. Ta-da! I am wearing a Scottish skirt. I'm going to look human again. Having such a good time in Scotland. As bald as a coot and as clean as a whistle. Scottish dinner tonight. McEwan's export. In a tin.